Okay, this uh, November 4th, 2015 meeting of the Oyster River Cooperative School Board will come to order. Um, just a couple things before we get started. First, uh, a mea culpa on my part. Um, actually, I felt like Roseanne, Rosanna Dana, and you remember her, you know how she'd give a big speech and then somebody would give her a piece of information to make the whole speech kind of irrelevant. <laughs> Well, I made this big speech about how we should have this policy to approve progress reports. Um, and afterwards, uh, uh, Todd Allen came up to me, played the Jane Curtin role, and reminded me that we do have a policy, which we had approved six months previously, um, which I had put in your folder. And the key line is that the grading system will be approved by the board and published in the parent student handbook. So we are partners in this, we, we need to be involved in this. It's very important as the school district goes forward to look at progress reports. The other thing is that we would like, to, I'd like to just propose a change in the order since we're going, one of the actions we need to take is the approval of a, uh, of a collective bargaining agreement to meet, to do the non-public sessions, to do both the non-public session and the non-meeting session after public comment, then come back and do the rest of the business. It seems to be a more natural order if that's agreeable to people. Is that, um, um, so, um, public comment. Hey, I'm uh, Dean Rubin from Lee. That's the public, as, as usual. Uh, hey, I was at the uh, the eighth grade guitar concert last night, and it was really great. Uh, what happens is the, they spend two months teaching these eighth graders to play guitar. I imagine most of them have never touched a guitar before, and then they have a concert, and it, it was just so good, and uh, the kids were so great. And, uh, so thanks, Mr. Irvin, and everybody else who, who, who participated. Uh, the other thing somebody asked me to mention is well, to me, it's a rumor that somebody, um, I guess the superintendent at the Lee Selectman meeting mentioned uh, uh, renovating the middle school or, uh, or building a new one, and I was hoping we could hear about that here. All right, that's all I got. Thanks. Other public comment? Okay. Um, could I have a motion then to go into non-public session? Kenny? I move that we go into non-public session based on RSA 91-A3-2, subscript 3, and I believe it's C, matters which discussed in public would likely affect adversely the reputation of any person other than a member of the public body itself. Okay. Moved by Kenny, second, seconded by Denise, and we need a roll call vote on this, so, yeah. Dan Klein, yes. Sir Farwell, yes. Kenny Rotner, yes. Hal Holland, aye. Tom Newker guy. Denise Day I. Maria Barthias. Okay. So we're going to non public. So we go to the conference room? Yes. The and so it's across the hall and just down a little bit. Okay. And so after just so the people know, after the non public, we're going to go into we're going to adjourn to go into non meeting. Okay. Right. Uh, what we'll do is we'll make a uh, we'll close the non public on the personnel area uh, agenda item. We'll open the door to the hallway. The board will make a motion to go into non-public again on a student matter. We'll address that issue. We'll complete that. The board will then make a motion to go to non-meeting on contractual issues in public. And then we'll close the door again. We'll get these three things done. Rather than walking back and forth, <coughs> we open the door and the public has the right to hear us making a motion, then we're good. Just, I, I, and just to reiterate that, so there's really two separate non-publics and they'll be handled as two separate non-publics. One is a personnel matter, that will end. Second non-public will begin after we go out of the first, that's a student matter. And after that one, there's the non-meeting, which is the contractual. So just can't say that's not. Okay, the meeting will come to order. Um, could I have a motion to approve the 
uh, October 21st, 2015 regular meeting minutes. Kenny? I move that we approve the meeting minutes from our October 21st meeting. Okay. Moved by Kenny, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Denise. Are there any corrections? Kenny? I had two. Mm -hmm. um, I think the first one would be, uh, I'm trying to get the page there. It's under board comments. Um, so I think that's page, page two. Um, I had mentioned that um, both the town of Lee and the town of Durham had approved the solar array project and that 10% of that project's um, energy generation was going to be made available to um, Massaway School to purchase. Okay. So I, I would want to add that. So do you have wording for that? Yeah, Kenny, if I could. It's um, 10 to 20 percent, and it's the Moharamet School. Okay. Not Massaway. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, Moharamet. Okay. 10 to 20 percent of what? Of the energy produced by the town of Durham's solar array project. And that's recently been approved both by the town of Lee and the town of Durham. So construction will proceed. <coughs> and I can give you, I'll write something down. Thank you. I can do that. Um, the second thing, and maybe this was just me, but when we discussed the full day kindergarten, uh, I was under the impression that we kind of liked the language more that rather than having a half day option, we were going to have an opt out yes. for parents. Yeah. yeah. So I think, I think the wording in there. Um, okay, could you just point to, is there a spot? Sure, um, let's see. So the second paragraph, right there. Yeah. that first sentence that we'll be giving parents a half day option yeah. and instead there's the understanding that parents can opt out of the full day kindergarten and send their children for a half day. Okay, that, do you have that, Laura? Uh, that's the two things I have. Okay, did you get that one? Great. Other corrections, changes? Hearing none, uh, with those two changes, all those in favor, please raise your hands. Seven in favor, the student rep in favor, the minutes are approved. Announcements and commendations from the district. I'm just gonna focus on sports tonight. Uh, okay. uh, earlier this evening, the boys uh, soccer team won two to one against Lebanon. Oh, in the Great. <laughs> They're playing in the state championship on Saturday afternoon at four o'clock. Mm -hmm. Southern New Hampshire University, second year in a row. So congratulations to Charlie Krell and the boys team. Um, tomorrow night uh, at 6 o'clock at Bill Ball Stadium in Exeter, our girls team is playing in the semifinals, and if they win, they would play in the state championship on Sunday at Bill Ball Stadium. So that's two possibilities. And just a quick plug for the great running that's done in this community. For the first time in Oyster River history, we have um, the individual male and female state champion in Division Two. So it's pretty exciting. We, we, we had. Uh, Patrick O'Brien won the boys' side, Megan Duty won on the girls' side, and both our boys' and girls' teams advanced to the meet of champions on Saturday. So if you're really interested in a lot of sporting events over the weekend, <laughs> Nashua, Nashua South High School, Saturday afternoon, 2.30, leave there, go to Manchester, watch the boys play in the state championship at SNU, and then z Sunday, zip over to Exeter, hopefully, and see the girls play in the state championship. Don't we have to go to the game Friday night as yeah, well? Yeah, well, we have to go to the game Thursday night Thursday first night. to make sure the girls get there. But I have tremendous faith in our girls. They're going to get there. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank God I don't have his job. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd be hoping that some of the teams would lose. <laughs> um, I want to just take a minute to recognize my staff <clears throat> last week for the presentation they made about the math program. 21 staff members showed up. That's the good news. The, it, this isn't bad news, but it's puzzling news and we've got to find a better way to get at the communication. Because while it is honorable and great that the staff did such a great presentation, there are 18 parents there. 
So we communicated to 18 parents. We've got to find more creative ways, and I'm not, I'm not complaining about parents. I'm complaining about my or our inability to figure out ways to get the message out appropriately. The um, presentation itself, itself was interactive. Parents asked good questions, and I'm sure there'll be a trickle-down effect, but it's sort of like trickle-down economics. It doesn't get far enough down to the whole population. So it's <clears throat> sort of recognizing my staff, but also questioning the way we're doing things. Thank you. Okay. No, no. Do we have to? It's just going to. No. <laughs> I will. Well, you'll you have, you have your time later, okay? Okay. Is there other? Good evening, Carrie Vaish from Mastway. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of the parents who um, assisted and put in tons of time into our Halloween event at Mastway. Um, we actually had it on a Saturday this year. Uh, what I learned was that there were a lot of Halloween events that happened throughout <laughs> our community. <laughs> some kids went <laughs> trick-or-treating at UNH in some of the dorms on Thursday night. They went trick-or-treating on Friday night, and then they came back to our school on Saturday night. But we really had an amazing turnout. It was very well organized. Um, Casey Dillon does a phenomenal, phenomenal excuse me, job with the haunted courtyard. If you've never experienced it, please come next year. It's great. And um, they all had a great time. So we even had Abe Lincoln in the house, which was quite impressive, I have to say. A lot of parents in costume, too. It was great. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Uh, board, Kenny, I'm sorry. You ready? Oh, OK. I, well, it's a couple of things. One. Um, John Carroll has approached me, and he's on our sustainability committee, about um, putting forward a um, winter farmer's market at our middle school. And we've talked with Jay Richard, and he's really on board. And it's not um, something that would happen this winter, as farmers are going to have to get um, set for that. But I didn't know how to proceed if we want to have approval at the board level for that. Mm. But we're in the process of talking with farmers who have shown a great interest in that. Mm -hmm. um, we, we're hoping that that will become kind of a school kind of project, which leads you know, to furthering of that sustainability of eating locally mm -hmm. and making that a real community project. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to, sure. to know that. Is that something, if John would like us to, could write, he write us a letter asking us to approve? Okay. To, so okay, we, John I think, can do that. Yeah, I think that would be good. Okay. I would use the word endorse as opposed to approve because it's not a policy issue. You're looking for support of the board on an, an endeavor. It's coming through sustainability, so it would work okay. Uh, okay. better as an endorsement of the activity rather than approval. Okay. Um, just what I was going to say to Mr. Harrington, um, I think we really live in the age where parents aren't going out so much to meetings at night, and Alexander won't really like this, but I think it really behooves us when there are important things like that, that we get them on videotape and that that goes online so people can watch them at those spare moments. And certainly everything doesn't have to, but things that are really informative like that, I think that's a critical thing. We should somehow make sure that we capture that. and. So the publicity is go watch it online. Sure. Mm -hmm. and, and we actually investigated that, Kenny, but um, Alex was already working that night in yeah. another event. So what we have is a one-man person and a person that we're keeping out late, uh, late at night in an evening like tonight, but other events he, he tapes as well. So it's, it, that issue came up, and he had the conflict, so we couldn't do it. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Uh, Sarah? Um, I just want to also thank the Muharamit staff for the math presentation I did here through the, the community grapevine, um, some very positive feedback about it and that it was really, people appreciate the hands-on and they really felt it was going to help them support their children. And I think that is the what you want from an evening like that. Um, so I do thank them. And, uh, I think as far as the, the getting the word out, I totally agree with you and have, um, 
had events like that as well, that you want to be so informative and, and people do feel are so important, um, but at the same rate are so overbooked. So I really am hoping that the district continues to work on those nights that parents do come to religiously like open houses at the beginning of the year um, to really take advantage um, of really plugging our curriculum during those nights uh, so that parents know what their children are doing. Uh, and, and it really is great PR for teachers as well because they, um, parents really, really see what professionals they are and how phenomenal they are. Dan? <clears throat> um, so I'd just like to echo what everyone has said so far about the math presentation. I was there, um, and th the staff did a fantastic job of not only uh, sort of presenting the curriculum, it wasn't a presentation, it was more of an experiential learning that parents were able to sort of sit in the shoes of their own children so that we had a better understanding of what our kids were experiencing in the classroom uh, so that we could then transition our own thinking to help them at home. And that's one of the big gaps with this, uh, this new type of curriculum is that the way we learned it as kids is so different from what they're experiencing now. I think it's so much better uh, what they're experiencing now, but I think what they really focused on was giving us the tools to understand how to support them at home and what they were experiencing in the class. So I really think they uh, were spot on with that. Um, and then I would agree with the, the, the points that Sarah and Kenny made as well. Um, you know, sort of getting that asymmetric experience uh, when we can to sort of videotape or capture things that people can then uh, look at later. Uh, and then obviously piggybacking on other events that people are more likely to go to. But um, <clears throat> anyway, I do think it was a success. Um, and anyone who asks, uh, you know, I'll tell them they should be there next time. <laughs> I'd just like to mention that <clears throat> the uh, National Assessment of Educational Progress scores came out, and uh, New Hampshire scored in the top, th one of the top three states for both fourth grade math and, and reading and eighth grade math and reading. And I think in eighth grade reading, they were tied for the top, uh, the top state in the country. And so sometimes I think when we look at the results of our own district and we're near the top in New Hampshire, we're near the top of one of the top states in the country and just to kind of recognize that. So I just wanted to share that. Other board, Denise? I just, I just remembered, I'll do another plug for a community dinner coming up. I believe it's Tuesday night, November 10th. Mm -hmm. So, and no school the next day, right? I'm right about that, right? Mm -hmm. So it, a good opportunity for families to come out. Okay. Enjoy a great meal. Thank you. Brea? Uh, I've said it before, this uh, agenda doesn't give us a place to raise issues mm -hmm. or what have you. Uh, but so I will piggyback on what Kenny brought up two weeks ago about the, the heroin uh, epidemic. And I would ask that we have a presentation on our substance abuse prevention program and I could make a motion that we have that soon. Ma'am, I think I don't need a motion. I can we'll make sure that happens. Okay. We'll, we'll put Thank it on. Mm -hmm. Other? Okay. Um, I assume there's no assist assistant superintendent's report. Superintendent's report? Yep. Thank you. Um, just want to fill the board in on where we are on the assistant superintendent search. Uh, we are in a great place. We had a screening committee of five uh, go through over two dozen applications yesterday and today. So I thought we'd end up around 20 of the two dozen uh, applications. We uh, eliminated three as incomplete. And then we went through um, all of the applications. And I thank um, Carrie and, and Misty and Jay. Um, and I'm missing one, Carrie. Oh, Sue, <laughs> who we went through all of them and we rank ordered um, the, the candidates and we came up with six candidates to interview. That interview process will um, be a week from Monday and we'll spend from noon until eight o'clock doing those interviews and hopefully by the end of the evening have a candidate that we're all uh, gun ho for and be ready to present to the board. Uh, I originally thought that I would present the candidate in the second meeting of this month, 
but given the fact that we're not doing the actual interviews until a week from Monday, um, I'm going to ask the board's grace and, and delay a nomination until the first meeting of December, which would allow um, a more in-depth uh, check, uh, checking of references and, and so forth. So uh, we're uh, almost on target. Uh, I was very impressed. I think the screening committee was very impressed with the applications we had, so um, we're in a good place there. Then, trying to read my own writing, um, Smarter Balanced, uh, Tom talked about how well we were doing as a state and how well Oyster River does in the state. Um, one of the uh, assessments the state is using is Smarter Balance. Our children went through that last spring. Long delay in this first release of the data uh, due to the states uh, trying to compile some handwritten um, test in relation to the state. We probably had six districts that did their whole thing by hand, which really threw off the state's ability to collect and, and uh, disseminate the data. Uh, the commissioner said that in this next iteration of Smarter Balance, uh, she hopes to have it out within the school year we're in. But this particular Smarter Balance uh, result will be released by the state of New Hampshire on November 12th. Um, Josh Olstead, our IT director, has been working for a month trying to figure out how he could release the results to parents electronically. Our backup position is we'll release them the old-fashioned way. Uh, the elementary principals will, would release them through the mail. Our middle school and high school principals will release them in a sealed envelope to the students. Uh, if we cannot find the electronic solution. So we're trying to figure out a way to match the state's data to our uh, mechanisms for distributing data. But failing that, we'll just do it the old-fashioned way. And if uh, parents haven't, high school in particular, haven't received that data, then we will make sure we mail it to them because high school parent, uh, students are notorious for not getting things home, like in the bottom of backpacks or in lockers. and. They don't tend to, or they get crumpled up in their pockets and go through the wash. Or, I mean, those are the things that happen with teenagers. So, but Todd is, and, and Jay are on top of that. So that's going to happen. And um, the other thing I would say about the smart ba balance results to parents is this is the first time the state has done it. So this this set of data is really baseline data. It's when, it, when we say it's baseline data, it means you can't compare it to any other data that you've received in any other assessment because it's brand new. So if parents have questions about the results, um, I would make a appointment with the guidance uh, staff at the high school or the uh, elementary principals and they would go over that with parents. Um, but it's a pretty straightforward format. It's actually very nice looking in terms of a format and, and the results are really just the results. Um, as a district we did uh, better than the state just like we do on SATs and PSATs and the national assessments but parents may have questions related to the results related to their child. So we want to make sure that um, parents have that opportunity to talk to their principals. I, um, Kenny, uh, as usual, stole my thunder on the solar array, but I will just say that I do have a copy of the contract with the, with the town of Durham, and um, I will be signing that tomorrow, and essentially it commits us to this relationship with the town of Durham for 20 years. It cost us nothing other than to be a partner. We put no nickel forward, no dollar, nothing. They needed a outlet for their excess energy production. We can use that energy, so it's really just a, um, a, um, a, a great relationship between the school district and the town of Durham that resulted in us being a partner in, in their efforts, so I'm, I'm excited by that. I think it fits our su sustainability policy, and it's great work by the town of Durham and the town administrator, Todd Selleck, to uh, generate this kind of grant, and to and it's wonderful that he thought of us in terms of asking us if we wanted to partner with them. So, Questions? that's my report. Okay. Um, business administrator? No? Just a reminder that we're doing budget tomorrow. What? Tomorrow morning's budget. Oh. Okay, good reminder. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll be together in less than 12 hours. <laughs> uh, and I don't know, might you say something, because you mentioned to, to me that, uh, I think to some others, that the, there will be no 
um, LGC money coming into us for the next budget year. That's correct? Okay. What? What? Well, why don't you? That was the news that we just received in addition to the 16.8% increase in health insurance. We're not getting that 400000 This year we will, but next year we won't. Oh. So there will be no premium okay. holiday next year. Get it. Can, can, is there a reason? Like yeah, there's a little paragraph in the um, report that says that um, the reserves were under what they expected. So based on that, they were advised by their actuary not to be awarding a premium holiday next year. So. Okay. I know. Unfortunately. So Sue has been the bearer of good news. So. <laughs> um, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A student center report? Can I ask a quick question sure, I'm sorry, about sure. tomorrow's meeting? The when is it starting and when is it predicted to end? Uh, it's uh, eight eight thirty is uh, coffee and breakfast. Doris will take care of that. Okay. And it sh we should be over by noon. We are providing lunch, so you can, if you're in a rush, you can grab something and go. Okay. Carolyn. Hi. Uh, Last meeting, I mentioned that the sophomore and freshmen were having a fundraiser, which is scheduled for tomorrow. Um, but unfortunately, that has been postponed to a later date. Um, and also, the physical education department asked me to mention on Sunday, November 4th, uh, 14th, at 7 a.m. until noon, uh, the PE department is holding a recyclable metal collection um, to fund their programs, with their first focus being a new climbing wall. Um, the in the fundraiser is entitled Metal for Muscle, and it's an ongoing um, partnership with Schnitz, Schneid, I, don't, I don't know how to say them, in Madbury, a recycling company. And you can drop off recyclable metals um, there or at, at the fundraiser on the 14th. I have papers that they gave me to give to all of you. Um, it's a great event for them, and they're really excited about it. Thank you. Okay, um, moving to the discussion items. Um, we have the ARESPA negotiated agreement, which I believe has been approved by the ARESPA union. Is that correct? Yes. Membership? 100% approval by the unit. Okay. Could you maybe just run over some of the highlights? Yep. Um, we entered into a three-year agreement with our ARESPA unit, which includes our custodians and, and secretaries. So this uh, contract begins in 2016-17 and ends in the 2018-19 year. <coughs> Um, this was the last unit that had a percentage basis on the health insurance buyout, so we were able to put a dollar fixed amount ceiling like we have with the teachers and other units. Um, we increased the amount paid at retirement for unused sick days from, from $20 to $50. As a comparison, our teachers get $70. We revised our sick bank language. The language we had was really confusing and uh, we put very clear language in and what it's for and, and so forth and how to use it. We actually created a sick bank a governance committee made up of administration and uh, RESPA members. Um, we've had a, a floating holiday forever in the contract. Everybody was using Columbus Day, so we just changed it from uh, floating holiday to Columbus Day. Uh, we deleted a, a bunch of language in the contract that wasn't relevant any longer. Uh, we added a tax sheltered annuity, a match of $300 in the first year. So we put in $300 as a district. If a staff member puts in $300, they get the whole $300. Um, again, as a comparison, our teachers are at $500. Um, we increased longevity pay for those, those custodians and secretaries who have uh, been here um, through the end of the uh, step system that's in the contract. And we negotiated uh, a salary agreement of one and a half percent in the first year, two and a quarter percent in the second year, and two and a half percent in the third year. Great. And so each year, uh, <clears throat> Sue, correct me if I'm wrong, each year comes into uh, comes in less than three percent, which was our goal. So that was that was one of the goals that we set as a board. So could I have a motion to uh, um, approve this um, negotiated agreement with ARESPA, Kenny? I move that we approve the agreement with the Oyster River Educational Support Personnel Association as enumerated. Okay, moved by Kenny, seconded by Denise. Is there further discussion on this? 
Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Seven in favor, the student rep in favor. This uh, agreement is approved and will go on the... Go on if the I may, Tom, I just want to commend um, the ARESPA representatives uh, during negotiations. It uh, was a non-traditional approach to negotiations and more conversation around what uh, the priorities were for the members of ARESPA, but also the priorities of the district, and uh, the process went extremely smoothly. Great. Thank you. And thanks to those people who served on the negotiating team. Um, the uh, policy requires that we begin the uh, superintendent evaluation at this point. And what we thought would happen would be that we, the first step would be to ask Dr. Morse to do a self-evaluation. And, and they have that to be done by December 2nd, so two meetings from now. At that point, we would have a non-public meeting and we would talk, you know, I think we can, we haven't planned it, but I think we'd have Dr. Moore share the self-evaluation and then we would take, figure out what steps we want to move to, to, to complete the evaluation process. So if that's agreeable, that the next step would be for us to meet to discuss his self-evaluation two meetings from now, which I think is December 2nd. Sarah? Um, I've, I re remember last year when we were doing the evaluation and feeling like some of the questions that, or the things that we were being asked to evaluate him on were things that I didn't necessarily have privy to see. Mm -hmm. So for example, you know, his interaction with staff, et cetera. And I guess we talked about la last year, maybe we would come up with some kind of survey or means to glean that information mm -hmm. other than just asking random staff members. Mm -hmm. um, and make it more of a, a more holistic thing. So I don't know when it's appropriate to sort of discuss that, but I'd love that. I think we could discuss that on December 2nd. Okay, great. You know, and decide what, if we wanted additional information how, and how we would get it. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, we have a draft charge for the communications committee and I wondered how or somebody from the communications committee want to say something about that? So we met I think it was a week ago Monday, and uh, there had been interest in us communicating the full day kindergarten proposal going forward. So we sat down to try to come up uh, with a charge that was tight and I think would hopefully alleviate concerns people had. Uh, and when we looked at the charge, there were three things that we really wanted to include. Uh, the first, that it defined what action the communication committee was going to take. The second, that it clearly defined the topic that we were going to work on. And the third was that we ensured that the information that the communication committee was conveying out to the public was all things that the board had already seen. It's like had been presentations that the board had been privy to so that we weren't synthesizing any new information. We were just reporting the information that we'd been presented. And so, we started, if you look at uh, the draft, the first one is specifically towards the full day kindergarten. And it says, the school board authorizes the communication committee to work with the superintendent in order to develop communications pertaining to full day kindergarten. Information that is used in these communications will be derived directly from the work of the full day kindergarten committee. And so I, I, we would need uh, the board to approve that to allow the communications committee to go forward. Um, the plan is uh, hopefully at the beginning of uh, December to have uh, public forums that we'd start out. And I sympathize with you, Dennis. It is difficult to get people to come. Uh, and we still need to get, uh, Dr. Morris is gonna have a meeting with, um, with the kindergarten teachers because those questions that we asked still need to be answered and the answers need to come back to the board so the board's seen them before we could then go forward and generate that in the, um, uh, in the forums. And then if you look down at the second one, uh, that provides the template, we think, going forward for the communications committee. And there, uh, again, the action is still uh, to work to develop communications, but what we left the blank thing is that it, the topic has to be approved by the board. And then the second blank thing is that the information that we're using to do that topic, we have to fill that in because it could be whatever presentation or committee that the board has seen. So the action that we really need is a approval of the, uh, 
the first uh, full day kindergarten uh, charge. So would you like to make that as a motion? So I'd like to make a motion that the, uh, that we approve the charge that the school board authorizes the communication committee to work with the superintendent in order to develop communications pertaining to full day kindergarten. Information that is used in these communications will uh, derive directly from the work of the full day kindergarten committee. Okay. Moved by Al, seconded by Kenny. Is there a discussion on this, Denise? Yeah, my, my only comment is in terms of, I, I think I'd like to see something about when the report would be made back to the board, maybe, like. The time of the whole Yeah, process. there's a sort of a timeline, and I'm not exactly sure, but I mean, I guess we always have committee updates mm -hmm. as part of our regular meetings anyway. So, I mean, as long as, you know, up, we are updated in terms of this is going to go out and this is happening, this forum is happening, those kinds of things, you know, I, I know I would want to see that. So, I would think that that could be part of either the superintendent's report or the committee report. Right. So, but I think it's a good point. And okay. would, would you want that, let's say even as an amendment mm -hmm. to add like another line is that the committee will inform the board either before a presentation is to take place or if the timing is such, we'll inform the board after um, there's been a presentation. So, somebody speak to that, Tom? Sure. I, I think that what um, the communications committee's put forward allows the board to know that the resource being used is information you've already received. If we start putting f uh, timeline restrictions on, you know, um, how things are done, then we're going to end up right back into that circumstance where everything's getting approved at this level as opposed to allowing this communications committee to do the job that you're asking them to do here. I mean, I could think of, you know, if we have timelines and restrictions, if a letter's going into the, the, the Democrat, if we're going to have, you know, a forum, if we're going to write a letter to Friday Update, if we're going to do something in Leak Cryer, I mean, there's all kinds of vehicles. I, I, I think that you want the committee to be true to the charge, but you want the committee also to be able to get the work done. And if you're going back and forth between the committee on work that you've already approved, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Yes, I, w I would just say that I think we have a mechanism for committees to report what's going on. We don't need something new right. for that. We just need to follow through with that. Right. And, and, right, and, uh, th and I was uh, agreeing with you, that's why I said, you know, if it's, per if it's possible before and if not after, but if I'm fine with just reporting back, I was trying to satisfy mm -hmm. Denise's. And I'm just gonna say, we had to add one thing with that, because if we, you know, the forms, of course, we hope we would tell people since we want them to show up long in advance. So like at a committee, or at, uh, when the committee updates occurred, we'd say we want to have a form, say December, whatever. And the other thing we discussed is like, you know, there was concern that somehow the board wouldn't be informed if we sent out some letter. Well, if we've generated a letter, of course we would include it in email to the rest of the board. You'd have, you'd see what the communication is. It wouldn't be some surprise. So, and of course then we'd say when we had an update, we've sent the letter that you've, we've shown you out to whatever fosters of that. So there's clearly an uh, avenue to provide, to keep the board apprised of whatever we're doing. Yeah, and if I could just again step in, Al, if you don't mind, we wouldn't use email. We'd use the yeah. board's official communication channels so that you're all getting information in your packets, that kind of thing. I, I, and I wouldn't um, use an informal process for communicating with the board as a body. Um, further questions? Okay, can we read a vote on this? All those in favor of this charge, please raise your hand. Seven in favor, the student rep in favor. Okay, we have a charge. Um, we need a motion to approve um, a particular student for attending at the Oyster River High School. And, yeah. So I move that we allow a student to attend the Oyster River Community School District High School as presented to us in the second of our non-public meetings this evening. I move that we allow a student to attend the Oyster River Community School District High School as presented to us in the second of our non-public meetings this evening. Moved by Kenny, seconded by Dan. Is there discussion on this? 
Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hands. Seven in favor. Motion passes. Um, we need a motion to approve. There's one policy, and I believe it's for second read. Is that correct? Uh, change of school assignment, J policy JCA. Could I have a motion to uh, approve that on second read for approval? Maria? So moved. Moved by Maria, seconded by Denise. Okay, is there discussion on this? Hearing none, all those in favor, please raise your hand. This policy is approved on second read and becomes policy. Okay. Uh, school committee, I, I think I have everything, that's right. Say anything? Uh, school committee, school, bo school board committee updates, Denise? Long Range Planning Committee met and uh, finalized the projections and the PowerPoint uh, to be shown to the board, which I believe is going to be at our next regular meeting on the 18th. Okay. Um, can I ask Denise a question just in terms, I went through those yesterday and, I'm, um, and I'll get hold of Lisa if you don't know the answer to this, but um, at, in the, her high school projections, um, it, she's indicating that she would expect that, that we would have 200 Barrington students um, as tuition in, in, you know, in the you know, fifth year and beyond. Do you know where she derived that number from? I know it, it basically came from looking at the contract in terms of the actual, the max mm -hmm. number. Let me find that one. But I, she can definitely yeah, I'll call explain her. I it know better when it. she does the presentation. But I know that for the high school projections, basically, um, you, the, you know, the committee took the uh, in-district number of students and then in terms of the Barrington students looked at the, the maximum as written in the contract and just projected that out that at some at some point I think it was I think it was 50 per grade is the way she fi she figured it, that eventually it would sort of level out to be about 50 per grade and that may not be right but I think well, that the reason I'm asking the question is the contract establishes 125 as a ceiling unless both gr both school systems agree to go beyond that yeah. number. So I'll, I'll give her a call tomorrow and, and see why <coughs> she's using 200. 200 as opposed to 125. Yeah. I think it was the 20%. There was something about, there was ability to go like 20, there was a tw something yeah. about a 20%, and I think that that's where she got that. Okay, from. yeah, all right. <coughs> Todd, do you, have, do you have a sense of that? The, 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 the growth of the Barrington population? Um, I mean, in terms of the, whether the number two whether, whether whether it's realistic to expect it to be 200 in, in the fifth yeah, year of the contract or whether... Well, I think uh, the way the contract is structured, as Dr. Morris pointed out, it, when you reach the 125 level, it, re it requires a mutually agreed upon level beyond that between the two districts. Mm -hmm. So it's really hard to create a projection around that because it really is a negotiation at that point. Okay. Um, Certainly one of the variables we would look at is our resident population and what's our capacity to and what can we sustain without you know, increasing staff. So I think th th it, is, it is a challenge uh, to, to project and I, I okay. completely sympathize with the difficulty of trying to pin down how do you project something that is not necessarily a mathematical pattern, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Other committee, sir, other committee, Maria? Uh, I wanted to talk a little about the six and 68 hours of hunger. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, it's been a little difficult relationship in the fact that we don't have a policy that actually fits the situation. And the feeling of the group is that we would like to ask you to disband it as a as a school committee, mm -hmm. committee, just because the way it works. Uh, at this point, we have never mixed our funds with the school system. We have it all through the 503C uh, group that is um, uh, spread over the seacoast area and as far as uh, I think there's a chapter in California mm -hmm. uh, some other state I will, uh, and all the money goes through them 
uh, we just pay bills to uh, cover expenses. Uh, as I said last time, our um, involvement or families involved in this program has grown since last year. Uh, I went to a regional meeting Monday. Uh, Rochester has over 100 children. Kittery has 90 kids. So we're a small so far uh, program, but it's quite impressive to see the hundreds of volunteers that are committed to keeping this going. Mm -hmm. And the committee wants to keep going. It, it, the bylaw says everybody has to be a, a volunteer. Nobody can do it on paid time, so to speak. And we obviously need staff members to volunteer and help with this because of the confidentiality. We don't want to know who the kids are. We don't want to identify the kids. Mm -hmm. That's done through nurses and um, mm -hmm. guidance counselors. And we have wonderful staff that have stepped up and said they want to volunteer. I would like to stay as kind of a, I don't know what, liaison. official. Liaison. Yes, but it wouldn't be a, you know, an appointed one since it's not a school board, but I would, because I think it's important enough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. that's where we are. So I'm asking so. the chair for the next uh, meeting to have it on the agenda to mm -hmm. expand it, which our policy says we can do any time. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, but... Okay. I assure you, the group will keep working. Mm -hmm. And I think it may be even easier for them to work without right. the restrictions of right. being a board committee. So I think so too. So, um, so we'll put that on the agenda for the next meeting and certainly thank you for all the work you did to get that thing rolling and your commitment to that. I think I it's- I love to take praise, but there are wonderful people that have actually done much more than that. I yeah, have. but thank you. Up, up till now, so the, the taxpayer ID you're using is the organizations as opposed to the schools for where you house the money. Is that correct? I can't quite hear you. I'm yeah. sorry. Yep. I think you might all need to talk in the microphone. Okay. So. Yep. The, so I, the question was that the, the money that you have so wonderfully raised, that's being housed in the taxpayer ID of the N68 hours yes, organization. Yes, it always not, has been. Not in the school. There right. are two um, credit cards. One, uh, Doris Demers has as one of the volunteers for this. And then one other person whose name I can't remember. And they pay the bills. And we had a wonderful presentation at this regional meeting about uh, nutrition on how to get the necessary nutrition into a bag that a little kid can carry home for 68 hours. And uh, the volunteers around this, this was a professional nutritionist that has volunteered his time to take apart the bags and look at the, every single solitary item that you can buy and send home and still get the vitamins and, and the stuff, so. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, just um, is there any way, because I, I, I seem to remember when you talked about 68 hours of hunger, it could only be, the money you raised could only be used for food. And we had talked about, uh, our, our concern was really like, what if like you needed heating oil assistance or something else? So is there a way that, you know, I, I, I know that the, having the 68 hours of hunger gives you a much bigger fundraising platform and all that, but is there a, a mechanism for you guys if you're, you know, to have something, an off branch of that, where you can take some of the fundraised money to gain a little bit more flexibility in some <laughs> of your needs? Uh, 
We're hoping that there are organizations that address heating oil, and uh, obviously the fire departments are taking on the, the coats and stuff. But yes, we cannot just raise money and use it the way we want to. But we can, and we have talked about it, and uh, start calling it six, and 68 hours of hunger and more. <laughs> and I can send you a letter and say, we have heard that the deodorants or toothbrushes or whatever is a big issue. And would you give money to that? And you would then have a mini little account, or we would have a mini account for toothbrushes, even though I've been told that we should ask our dentists and they are more than happy to give us toothbrushes, but that's as an example. Yeah. Okay. So 68 hours and 68 hours of hunger and more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Other committee updates? Um, the wellness committee met. Uh, Catherine Moore is the chair of that now. And um, one of the big initiatives, they're gonna cr create a subcommittee to look at mental health. So that's one of the big pushes they're gonna make is a subcommittee um, that's being formed. And I've asked her uh, to come to the meeting just briefly to talk about what the, what the goals, you know, since sim similar to what we did with sustainability, to what, what the goals are. So you hear from her and not from, not from me. So that's gonna be coming up. Okay, other committee, hearing none, um, public comments? Yeah, I'm, I'm Dean. I wasn't going to make a public comment, but uh, I'm looking at the tuition agreement, and I don't really see anything that says that we have to agree if Barrington wants to send more than 125 students. Correct. They can just. I thought. I thought you said they had to, but uh, no, they can just keep. You know, it's up to them. No. As, as it's far up as to I us. Can mm -hmm. Oh, I don't see that here, but uh, okay. That's all I got. Other public comment? None? Okay, uh, closing <coughs> actions. Uh, we will all reassemble tomorrow morning, okay? Uh, so 8, 8 to 8.30 for breakfast. The we'll, meeting will start at, at 8.30. Uh, then we'll have a budget workshop at, at the 12th, and then a regu next regular meeting on the 18th of um, November, okay? Um, so that concludes our business for today, I think. And uh, so could I have a motion to adjourn? Somebody. Maria? Moved by Maria, seconded by somebody. <laughs> Dan, all those in favor, raise your hands. We are adjourned.